The prosecution of Raj Rajaratnam and other defendants tied to hedge fund Galleon Group will change the way the Justice Department conducts insider trading investigations. The use of wiretaps to show that Mr. Rajaratnam and others were passing information back and forth was powerful evidence that had not been available to prosecutors before. In the past, putting together an insider trading case usually involved digging through mounds of telephone records and emails. The goal was to connect suspiciously timed trades to the receipt of confidential information. But wiretaps could reveal the crime as it took place. Wait, what's the, what's the deal? How much are they investing? Uh, they'll probably say they'll put up to six to eight billion. But oh, you know, for, most, for most people, it'll just be, yeah. look, there's no question anymore on whether these guys can make the stuff, right? Right. Should I buy That won't happen, even? by the way. That won't ha- the announcement won't happen until uh, the week after Labor Day. Right, but we but should you buy know, you can't time these things perfectly, right? right. It'll get uh, leaked out, right? Mm, mm, exactly. Now, let right. me ask you, um, how much do you want to buy for that India book? You know, frankly, Raj, it doesn't matter to me. You buy wherever you want to you buy it because this is liquid enough. You can buy it in the rest of your system as well, right? The strength of this evidence may mean that prosecutors will try to replicate the template for the Galleon Group investigation in future cases. Expectations in insider trading cases may be heightened by the prosecution of Rajaratnam. In fact, this may become the new norm having wiretaps in these cases, and that would present prosecutors with some significant challenges. Wiretaps are not easy to obtain and require the government to put together extensive documentation supporting the need to record calls to gather evidence of a crime. I think the agents now at the FBI and and other agencies now will use more traditional uh, investigative techniques to investigate white collar crime, whereas in the past they really didn't. But it's not easy to get a wiretap. It's not like on TV or in the movies where you just say, oh, put a tap on that person's phone. There are legal standards that have to be met, and a federal judge has to approve the authorization. Getting judicial approval for a wiretap is also no guarantee of success. The Galleon trial, along with cases involving expert networks, put the hedge fund world and other traders on alert. They now know that their telephones may be tapped and the person speaking with them might be wearing a wire. So the government could find it more difficult to get the type of evidence it had against Mr. Rajaratnam. I think, uh, based on human nature, people in this field will just become more circumspect in their phone conversations. The question is how long that effect is going to last, because it's hard to not talk freely on the telephone when day in and day out it's a part of what you do eight hours a day. Federal District Judge Richard Hallwell criticized the government's application for wiretaps in the Galleon case, saying important information was left out of the affidavit. Still, he allowed the evidence to be used at trial but prosecutors now realize that they must adapt their strategies to the realities of using wiretaps. What the Galleon trial really signifies for enforcement then is that serious crime fighting tools require a serious shift in strategy. This is Peter Henning for DealBook at the New York Times.